On October 26, 2012, Microsoft released the latest iteration of its consumer-based operating system. Dubbed Windows 8, the OS presents a radically new user interface and goes a long way to embracing touchscreen and cloud technologies. In this episode of Tech Report, I'm going to be walking through the installation of Windows 8, as well as providing a review of some of the new features that the OS has to offer. If you have an existing PC, be it a desktop or a laptop, and want to upgrade to Windows 8, then the first thing you'll need to do is obtain a copy of the operating system. If you purchased a new PC between June 2012 and January 2013, then Windows 8 is available as a $15 upgrade. Head on over to windowsupgradeoffer.com for more details. For those who have not recently purchased a new PC, or for those who have uh, possibly built their own PC, Windows 8 remains fairly inexpensive. Uh, as, a, as an update edition to upgrade from Windows XP, 7, or Vista, Windows 8 costs $40 as a standalone software upgrade, or for an additional $30, users can opt to purchase a recovery DVD to have physical media to install the operating system from. A copy of Windows 8 can be purchased online at the MicrosoftStore.com or from your local computer retailer. Once you have obtained a copy of Windows 8, it is now time to install it. And there are really two methods of installation you can follow through. The first is an upgrade installation, which will basically upgrade your existing operating system, be it Windows XP, Vista, or 7, to uh, Windows 8. Upgrading will preserve all of your user accounts, documents, and programs, however it may cause compatibility issues in the long run. The second type of install is called a clean install, and that will install a brand new copy of Windows 8, uh, erasing all the documents and settings and user accounts of your previous Windows operating system. I recommend doing a clean install as it helps reduce problems in the long run. So, when doing a clean install, which is the installation procedure I'm going to walk through in this video, you want to make sure you back up all of your data so that you don't lose anything when you're doing the new installation. After you have backed up your data, pop in your Windows 8 installation disk and reboot your computer. Set the BIOS to boot off of DVD, and you should see the Windows 8 loading screen. Note that uh, it may hang at the Windows 8 loading screen for some time. Uh, it sat at that screen for about 7 minutes on my desktop PC. After the installer has started, you can select your regional and language options. Next, Microsoft will re require you to enter a valid Windows product key. After you've entered a valid Windows 8 key, you can accept the license agreement and proceed on to the type of installation. Select Custom Configuration if you are wanting to do a clean install, or if you do indeed want to do an upgrade, you can select Upgrade. Next, uh, it'll take you to the partitioning screen where you can select your hard drive. I would recommend formatting your hard drive when doing a clean installation, uh, and you can click Next. Uh, after you've selected your hard disk, uh, sit back and wait for the installer to work its magic. It took about 15 minutes on my desktop PC to fully complete. After the installation finishes, you will be prompted to enter a name for your PC. After uh, configuring the computer name, you can choose to use all the Microsoft default settings or customize your own. I would highly recommend that you choose to customize your PC settings and, quick and carefully review each option. Next, Windows will ask you to configure a Microsoft account. Now, if you're like me and you don't want a Microsoft account, then you can choose to configure your computer with local user accounts. Click the Sign In Without a Microsoft Account link near the bottom of the page. This will allow you to enter a username, password, and password hint uh, that is stored only on your PC, just like with previous versions of Windows. After that, Windows will finalize your computer settings and play a nice introduction video. Congratulations, you now have a fully functional copy of Windows 8. The first thing you will notice after installing Windows 8 is the radically new user interface that is uh, definitely optimized for touchscreen use. If you have a traditional laptop or desktop PC, however, you probably are not concerned with touchscreen compatibility and you don't really want to be running applications in full screen anyway. Click on the tile marked Desktop and breathe a sigh of relief as you uh, immerse yourself in a familiar Windows desktop environment. 
The only thing missing, however, is the traditional start menu. If you find yourself missing the start menu, don't despair. There is a perfectly good open source replacement called Classic Shell. Classic Shell will do everything that the Windows 7 start menu can do, could do and more. Uh, hop on over to sourceforge.net and download the latest version. After installation, you can breathe a deep sigh of relief as a familiar orb appears in the corner of your taskbar. Classic Shell does a fantastic job of replacing the Windows 7 start menu, and it is fully customizable. You can uh, also use Classic Shell to configure your computer to boot automatically into the Windows desktop, bypassing the new tablet user interface entirely. Windows 8 is finally usable for power users again. So now that we've installed Windows 8 and restored the start menu to the operating system, it's time to show off some of the new features. Uh, the most impressive of which is multiple taskbars. If you run Windows 8 on a system with multiple monitors, you will quickly notice that each monitor gets its own taskbar. Each taskbar can be configured to display icons only for applications that are running on the associated monitor. This makes locating running applications easier and clutter on your main taskbar drastically reduced. A more detailed look at the uh, Windows 8 taskbars can be found in my review of the Windows 8 Beta Edition. The next feature I'm going to highlight is the ability to mount disk images directly in the operating system. This is something Linux users have been able to do for years and has just recently come to the native Windows operating system. Say you have a disk image of your favorite piece of software and you want to mount it and install it without having to burn it to a CD or DVD. Well now with Windows 8 you can. Just right click on any standard disk image and select mount. Now, when you browse to the My Computer window in Windows Explorer, you can note that a new CD drive has appeared, and you can browse the contents of the disk image without having to extract it, or install any third-party software. To unmount the disk image, just right-click on the new CD icon in Computer, and select Eject. Many folks that have run a Windows system for a few years will know that the system can become sluggish and unresponsive over time. This is, because that, this is because over years of installing programs and removing programs, the system can get filled up with temporary files, registry errors, and unused startup programs and services. Many times, the only way to fix a sluggish Windows system is to completely reinstall the operating system, deleting all personal data and user accounts that have been configured. Now, with Windows 8, reinstalling Windows is not that much of a hassle. With Windows 8, Microsoft has announced a new feature called Windows Refresh, which allows you to install all the essential Windows system files without having to delete your personal data or user accounts. Running Windows Refresh will take about 20 minutes and doesn't require any additional installation media. It is important to note that running Windows Refresh will remove all your third-party applications and programs that you have installed, but really, if you're wanting to reinstall Windows anyway, this is probably a desired result. Windows 8 also op offers the option to do a complete factory reset from within the operating system's built-in tools. However, this will delete all your personal data and all your user accounts. Users of Microsoft Windows since the days of XP are probably familiar with a nag in the taskbar prompting you to install antivirus software if none is installed. With Windows 8, those days are gone. When trying to install Microsoft's free uh, security suite, Microsoft Security Essentials, I was brought to the realization that Windows 8 had built-in antivirus software, something that is long overdue. Now, it remains to be seen how effective Microsoft's built-in antivirus software is, but it's fantastic to see that Microsoft is finally putting some emphasis of security into their operating system. Microsoft's... Um, and built-in antivirus is called Windows Defender, and it can also be disabled if you prefer to use third-party solutions. A note now on application compatibility, and I have found that uh, every single application that will run in Windows 7 will run flawlessly in Windows 8. All of my regular programs, including some oddball ones like VMware vSphere Client, Hoppage WinTV, Firefox, Thunderbird, and Atollic True Studio, all run on the Windows 8 desktop without issue. Now, if you have concerns about a specific application, it'll probably be best to contact your application's vendor or Microsoft for more information, but uh, the chances are that, that it will run seamlessly in Windows 8. 
With all the good features that Windows 8 introduces, there are, of course, going to be a few bad ones. And the most annoying of which is Microsoft's half-assed attempt at cloud integration. I call Microsoft's attempt at cloud integration half-assed because it works extremely well if you're willing to sign up for a Microsoft account, and it is completely non-existent if you don't. Uh, launching the default email, calendar, or contact sharing applications will yield nothing useful unless you are willing to input your data for a Microsoft account. I'm, of course, assuming that once you have a Microsoft account, you can then link third-party uh, CalDAV, CardDAV, and email services to it. Uh, but I don't really need a Microsoft account trying to manage my email and shared calendars. So for the time being, anyway, I'm going to stick with open source solutions such as Mozilla Thunderbird for all my shared calendar and email needs. Finally, Microsoft hasn't included the easy ability to kill full-screen applications. Uh, whenever one launches one of the new full-screen applications, be it one of the built-in ones or one from the Windows Store, um, the only way to close it is to open up the desktop, fire up Task Manager, and actually kill the process. This is something that a lot of users aren't going to be familiar with. So I can foresee lots of folks running low on RAM and other computer resources as a whole bunch of processes running in the background take up a lot of uh, computer system resources. This is something that Microsoft should fix in future updates. As more users adopt tablets and other ultra-portable computing platforms, the PC market is undergoing some serious change. Microsoft's answer to this change is to produce one operating system that will run on desktops and on ultra-portable platforms as well. And it remains to be seen whether this, this approach will pay off in the long run. Windows 8 has a few learning curves, but the system is stable overall, and compatibility with existing applications will mean that users won't have to upgrade to new solutions right away. Windows 8 does have a few serious shortcomings when it comes to third-party cloud integration, but overall, I would recommend the operating system as an upgrade. For Tech Report, this is Christopher, reporting.